All right, I did not know that. Well, the Military for Religious Freedom Foundation, a watchdog group that has waged repeated battle with the armed services, took issue with the last clause of the sentence, saying that uh, no cadets should be forced to make a promise to God. After the complaint was filed by MRFF, the Air Force Academy Honor Review Committee, met for an in-depth discussion regarding the oath. Well, last Friday, the AFA released a statement saying they had decided to make the final clause of the honor oath optional. And I again say that was the right move to make. Now, MRFF has uh, taken issue with the Air Force before. As a matter of fact, two years ago, the group complained about an Air Force training presentation that used religion that used religion to teach the ethics and morality of using nuclear weapons. That same year, uh, CNN reported that the Air Force was using a religious tenets such as the Ten Commandments to teach core values to ROTC cadets. All right. Uh, so, once again, I think this was the right move um, made by um, the Air Force Academy, and I commend them for it. All right. I'm not going to be on my soapbox long today. I uh, It's a Halloween celebration, so I wanted to uh, step aside and have some fun with this program like I normally do, but have a little extra fun because Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, if not the favorite holiday, uh, next to Christmas. And I know that sounds contradictory, but coming from an atheist because I also love Christmas. I love the feeling of Christmas. I love the sentiment of Christmas. I just don't buy in the supernatural aspect of it. But on Christmas, it's the only time of the year I think that we can all drop our guards and that there is, at least there is this, there's this attempt at peace. Okay, but I'll talk about that later. Right now, though, I want to share with you some of my Halloween memories. And one of the reasons why I love Halloween is that it allows us to be true to who and what we are to a certain extent. You know, a chance to put on a costume to, you know, be someone you want to be for a day that you normally couldn't be. Um, I'm not going to dress up this year, but next year on the program, assuming I'm still doing this show next year, I'm going to have some fun with it. I'm going to reveal what I'm going to do right now, because it's still, I'm still working out the details, but we'll get to that next year. But some of my fondest memories of Halloween, uh, my dad always took me trick-or-treating when we lived in Fayette. Um, uh, and it was one of the few times that my dad and I could go out, you know, and just be guys. You know, granted, you know, there were 28 years separating us, but he was a good protector and, you know, and always made sure that I was polite to people, et cetera, et cetera, and made sure that I was safe. Um, so that's what stands out in my mind. Um, probably one of the most distinct Halloween memories that I have of trick-or-treating was the last year that I went trick-or-treating, which was which was in 1981 when I was in fourth grade. I don't remember what I dressed up as, but I do remember that it was an exceptionally warm Halloween that year. It seemed like it was in the upper 50s, temperature-wise, or around there. And we were having power outages in my hometown. That's one of the things that I remember. Another Halloween I remember, uh, I think I was in second grade, which would have been about 1980... No, take that back, 1979. Yeah, 1979, I dressed up as Fred Flintstone, and the babysitter that was uh, watching over me that year, um, I think it was like on a Tuesday evening or something like that, or middle of the week, and I remember it was kind of rainy that day, and we went out trick-or-treating early, and I went out and got some extra goodies that way, I was dressed up as Fred Flintstone, I don't know why, I had to think for Fred Flintstone back then, and then I think it was third grade... I got a Darth Vader costume, and I was hoping for the mask and all that stuff, even though I thought it was going to be kind of hard to do that because I wore glasses and I had an astigmatism. Now, if I closed my right eye, I could see fairly well. But instead, my mom found this cheap Darth Vader costume. It was more like a Zorro mask. with a very It was very tight. It didn't fit for very long. As a matter of fact, I think the rubber band snapped shortly after I wore it that year, and it had some sort of cape black cape and it was a really crappy uh, Halloween costume but my mom tried but I wanted the whole helmet the whole cybernetic thing the boots and all that but instead I was a Darth Vader kid with the Zorro mask and wearing tennis shoes 
And probably my favorite Halloween um, was in 1986. And the reason why, it was a week after I met one of my best friends for the first time, at least that I got to know her. Her name is Joy. Uh, back then it was Joy Dodson, now it's Joy Flanders. And uh, we met uh, earlier that month, basically that fall, because she was taken over as the youth leader of uh, my church youth group. And we became good friends, and still a, a very dear friend to this day. Um, it was like a big sister to me. But anyway, we met, I really got to know her the week prior to Halloween that year, which was October 24th, 1986. It was a Friday. Well, a week later, one of my favorite radio programs at the time was on Quix Radio. It was called TTO, short for This, That, and the Other. And it was basically a local variety show, which a couple of guys, one of them was named Larry Weller. I don't remember who the other one was. I remember his first name was Richard. I think it was Richard Kane or something like that. But anyway, they did this um, radio play in which they supposedly went to uh, some haunted house and they got lost. And for a while, I honestly believed that they were hurt, got trapped, and I realized I'd been duped. So I can kind of understand how people fell for the War of the Worlds broadcast 75 years ago. But that was one of the happiest Halloweens that I can remember uh, in my childhood, in my youth. It was a Friday, I was listening to TTO, and I remember I recorded that, and I listened to that broadcast. I studied that broadcast for months after that. But those are some of my uh, Halloween memories. And hope you'll share some of your Halloween memories with me via email or through Skype. And uh, I'll be glad to pass them along as uh, we move on with uh, First Cup. And speaking of moving along with First Cup, uh, we're going to step aside for a little bit. And when we come back, I have more of the program with things like uh, news headlines, the weather forecast, as well as celebrity birthdays later on along with Today in History, plus a whole lot more. But coming up next will be things you need to know, things that are trending on this uh, last day of October 2013. So stick around, my friends. More of First Cup is on the way. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Pew, pew. Wait, wait. Mom, what? Huh? What? Hold What'd on. you say? Wait a second, huh? what? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, paths, bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to report a bear sighting. Location? In the forest near the side of the road. No need for alarm, sir. The forest is where bears live. But this was no ordinary bear. No ordinary bear? Yeah, one second, I'm having a smoke taken in the view. Next thing I know, I am face to face with Smokey Bear. Let me guess, Smokey had a tip for you. He did. He must have seen me toss my cigarette on the ground. He told me never to do that because it only takes one spark to start a wildfire. He's a smart bear. Did you know that nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans? That means nine out of ten wildfires can be prevented. That's what Smokey Smokey said. I had no idea. That's why Smokey's famous, and you're not. Good point. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference, because 9 out of 10 wildfires are caused by humans. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. The creepy and the cookie, the serious, 
Oki, the Adam family. The house is a museum, one people come to see. Oki, the Oki, they're all together. Oki, the Adam family. The house is a museum, one people come to see. They really are the three of the Adam family. Oki, the Oki, they're all together. Oki, the Adam family. The house is a The Adams Family, brought to you by Kraft Toothpaste, proved effective against cavities in test after test after test. Over 12 years of tests. Gangnam Style And welcome back to Studio 27 on this Halloween morning and here are some things you need to know, okay? Smartphones extend our work days. Ugh. My work day is already long enough as it is. Well, it seems that with smartphones and gadgets in hand, we're having a hard time dropping a workload when uh, 5 p.m. rolls around. 5 p.m. <laughs> you wusses, I'm just getting warmed up at 5 p.m. Just I haven't even had first break yet at 5 p.m. most days. Well, even after an 8-hour day, 8-hour day, kiss my tush. Uh, I'm not bitter. Uh, many employees report checking emails and taking work-related calls after hours. Having constant access to our mobile communi communication streams tax on an extra two hours of work a day. Two hours? Oh, <laughs> You can tell I'm really sympathetic. Uh, in news attack this morning, DC Comics, the home of Batman and Superman, announced that it will leave New York for California in 2015. Well, it's about damn time. You know, Superman could stay. I mean, it shouldn't be much of a problem for him to commute. I mean, after all, when you fly faster than time. But I guess maybe he just just getting tired of the uh, of the hustle and bustle of it all in New York. Uh, reportedly, teens are not excited about Facebook, but are not leaving in drones either. Okay. Well, it seems that Facebook admitted this week that uh, what many teens already know, it's not as cool to be on Facebook anymore. Probably because your parents are on it, you know. But while some stories uh, would have you believe that teens are dumping Facebook in droves, it's simply not true. The company says while there is a decrease in daily users among younger teens, just about every teen in the United States is still using the social media website service. You know, there's a little th obstacle in the way. I think it's called a school, and I think the majority of teens are still in school. But that's just my opinion. I don't know how long this uh, survey has been conducted. But if you say since August, yeah, I think there's probably a pretty good decline there in that regard. And uh, finally, a guy drove across the United States in a record 28 hours, 50 minutes. Wow. I can't even remember what I did 28 hours and 50 minutes ago. Ed Bullion claims he's just the fastest man ever to drive across the United States. A record set uh, in 2006, 31 hours, 4 minutes, was allegedly broken by a three-man team consisting of Ed, a co-driver, and a passenger in a 2004 Mercedes-Benz CL55 AMG. I want to run some calculations a little bit later on. Maybe I can figure out what their average speed was. It would be interesting to see what route they took. The record was, is now uh, 28 hours and 50 minutes. And they'll probably be bragging about it for the rest of their lives, which they should be able to. All right, those are things you need to know on this Thursday. Now let's take a look at news headlines. Hello, Americans. This is Paul Harvey. Stand by for news. And in news headlines today, NSA denies spying on tech companies, and Google is outraged. Yeah, NSA Director, Army General Keith Alexander.